Yo, what is going on YouTube and Trailblazers? It is your boy WTF Mike here, and today we're going to be going over three big tips to instantly fix your bricked account on Honkash Star Rail. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So the very first thing I want to talk about is saving your resources. So most likely if your account is bricked, it's because you have no level up XP materials, no stellar jades, and no chances of pulling on any of the limited banners that are coming up. Or maybe you just lost a lot of 50-50s on limited banner characters and you're stuck with a whole bunch of standard banner characters. Or maybe characters that you don't really like anymore because they're not fitting into your team composition well and you also might have exhausted all your resources out so the very first step into fixing your bricked account is to just assess your situation what characters do i have what resources do i have how can i make these characters better what resources are causing my account to suffer so bad is it character level up materials is it relic materials is it lyco materials what is causing my account to be held back and to making more progress to move forward make sure you are asking yourself this so that way you have a rough idea of what you you need to do so we can get back on track now with that out of the way and once you have your account assessed and you figured out what you need to do to move forward the second step is holding yourself accountable you gotta save those resources remember we are focusing to fix our account so there is one thing that i need to tell you that you really absolutely need to remember and that's the fact that honkai star Rail is a gotcha game so what does that mean exactly well what this means is is that gotcha games take time just look at your account and look at everything that you have unless if of course you're a new Honkai Star Rail player, then you can use this guide as a means to not break your account. So if that is you, make sure you visit the Astral Express each time you level up your Trailblaze level because Pom Pom has some level up materials waiting for you. And there are a whole bunch of rewards such as Light Cone level up XP, Character level up XP, Free Stellar Jades, and also fuel for your dailies. Next up, in your daily login, you want to make sure that you are sending your characters out on their assignments every 20 hours. There is a whole bunch of trace materials and level up materials that you could gain from doing doing this. And even if you're not a player that logs in every day, just make sure you do this before you log off and when you log in. So that way, when you come back to Honkai Star Rail, you just have materials sitting there waiting for you. And just recently, Honkai Star Rail made it easier by adding the claim all function. I am not exactly sure when they added this feature, but it's been added and it really helps a whole lot because it makes sending your characters on runs that much easier. Next up, we have the Nameless Honor, or for those of you who are new players to Honkai Star Rail, this is their battle pass. Now, even if you are a player that is strictly free to play the nameless honor has a whole bunch of level up resource materials that will help you out in the long run simply all you gotta do is follow the week missions and the period missions in order to level up on your nameless honor and to be honest as long as you log in daily you really don't have to grind that hard to get through the whole nameless honor the nameless honor is equipped with a lot of resources that are valuable to you and reviving your account such as character level up xp materials light cone level up xp materials even standard banner pulls for free there's also tracks of destiny for your character's traces and self-modeling resin which is one of the most important materials in helping you build characters that we will get into in just a moment now of course if you are a player that goes to nameless glory this will help you even farther into helping your account get back on track you get extra stuff such as cool profile pictures and even a free light cone you also get free limited banner pulls and salvage relics as well and tears to help force the level up of traces now collecting salvage relics and relic remains are really important collecting these over time will help you so we can get certain relics and try to roll for the best possibility for your current characters. You can also destroy other relics such as 3-star and 4-star pieces so that we can create gold fragments. So you can use those fragments as level up materials for your better pieces such as the 5-star relics. And I'm sure that you already know you don't want to be spending too much time leveling up 3-star and 4-star relics and saving up for the 5-star relics only. Now, if you go over to Synthesize, we could actually use the self-modeling resin that we saw in the Nameless Honor as well as the Salvage Relics. Here you get a list of all possible ornaments and relics that you can obtain through your playthrough of Honkai Star Rail. Instead of going to your International Peace Guide or maybe her to simulate universe to get relics and ornaments, you could use salvage relics to try to form the specific relic that you need for your characters. Now, the reason why you need to save your self-modeling resin is because when you're creating a new relic or ornament with your salvage pieces, with the self-modeling resin, you could actually choose the specific main stat of that piece of relic or ornament, which all in all, hires the chances that you are rolling for the specific ornament and relic that you need for your characters. All right, guys, let's talk about events real quick. So in my playthrough of Honkai Star Rail, I actually really ignored this fact. I had a couple of friends tell me, hey, you should just get through the main story so that way you don't miss out on the limited time events. Me being me, I didn't listen to my friends and what ended up happening was I missed a whole bunch of limited events, which was missed opportunities at more resources for my account, more stellar jades, and a whole bunch of other items that I can no longer obtain. Now, in most gacha games like Genshin Impact, for example, you do want to go around 
around and interact with everything. However, in Honkai Star World, as it's not as open world as Genshin Impact, it is very easy to actually go back and retrieve the stuff that you miss. Doing the open world part of Honkai Star World and getting all the trotters and all the chests that are scattered around the map really can be done at any time. And unlike Genshin Impact, it doesn't really affect your gameplay in any way. For example, having to collect the Oculus in Genshin so that we can increase your stamina. So I believe in Honkai Star World, your first goal is to immediately catch up with the story if you haven't already. Even me, I'm still currently suffering from not catching up with the story because I can't clear all the limited time events. Missed events are a missed opportunity and a missed shot at gaining more resources for your account. The weekly simulated universe will give you a whole bunch of resources that will help you out long term, such as standard banner pulls, herd of bonds for light cones, and relic level up XP materials. Now, in the new update of the simulated universe with World 9, we're able to get Herda to idle on 5 free of cost. So if you're looking for a decent unit that can do all around AoE damage, just use Herda. One, she's free. Two, she's one of the best pure fixing clearers. And three, kudo kudo. You also have a chance of getting extra jobs from the simulated universe and a whole bunch of stellar jades for banner pulls. Next up, just go on to the open world and start slaying things. You need materials, you know where to grab them. Grab them off the enemies. Even if it's little by little, those little things doing them daily will rack up over time and you will notice that your account's resources have gone up. And now in chapter two of Honkai Star Wars, where there is many places to go, there is just many farming routes to take. Even if it's just a little bit, if you go onto the open world to start fighting enemies, you will slowly but surely gain more materials over time. Next up, and the last I have on the resource list and why I'm keeping this in last is because I'm sure you've heard this many times. Just do your dailies. Your dailies provide you with stellar jades and relic level up materials. It is also one of the fastest ways to collect trailblaze power so that way you can put it towards your nameless honor and rank up your battle pass. And you guys already saw how much resources you've gained from that. So just make sure you do your dailies. I would also like to mention that doing your dailies in your interactual peace guide will lead to more resource materials for you. And a very important note, it is okay to use your reserve trailblaze power to convert it into trailblaze power. And guys, stop using your fuel each time you get it. Only use your fuel if you're grinding out for a character that you absolutely need to finish one of the end game contents or maybe progress more through the story. Remember, the whole point of doing this is to break bad habits and start good ones. That is the key trick to saving your Honkai Star Rail account. Next up is a tip that I have for those of you with a gotcha addiction. Or maybe I should say a gambling addiction. If this is you, you are the type of player that each time you have an available pull, you just use it right away. Now, I try to tell people over and over again to save their banner pulls. If you are a player that likes to pull for aesthetic and you just pull for whatever characters you like, then this tip isn't for you. However, if you are the player that is overwhelmed and needs a certain specific unit so that way it will push them over to clearing what they need to clear, such as end game content like Memory of Chaos or maybe Pure Fiction, then you really need to just stack up your pulls and wait for a character that fits into your team composition well. Next up is making use of your current characters and your current team compositions. Now, maybe you're that player that regrets pulling on certain characters and you think that these characters are bad over time. Well, I got news for you. This couldn't be far from the truth. There are a bunch of tier lists and guide makers and a whole bunch of other content creators that will steer you in the wrong direction. I mean, I won't lie. Sometimes I take criticism on my work too because sometimes I'm wrong as well. However, when it comes to tier lists, when characters are rated B tier, C tier, or maybe even D tier, this does not mean that these characters are useless. There are a bunch of players out there, even creators even, that really take the time out of their day to make the worst characters good. And not only that, let's also throw a bone out to the strictly free to play players who grind out their accounts without spending a dime on Honkai Star Rail. There are players out there who remain free to play that can clear memory of chaos and pure fiction with ease. I mean, I even watch videos on people who don't even roll on gacha and still clear the game. So in other words, your team composition is one of the most important things in this game. For example, I use two Nihility with Akron and Pela, or at least I'm trying to build this as my second team comp for memory of chaos. Now, the reason why I use Akron and Pela together is because Akron really benefits on having another Nihility on her team. Under Akron's bonus ability, the Abyss, when there are one or two Nihility characters other than Akron in the team, the damage dealt by Akron's basic attack skill and ultimate increases to, to 115% or 160% of the original damage respectively. So that's a good example of two characters that work really well together. Now, a really important thing that you could do as well for yourself is read what every ability does and read it thoroughly because this can give you a hint on how to understand more of the gameplay and how to become stronger and make a stronger team composition. I know during my playthrough, I skipped through reading a lot of things and it leaves me a little bit lost now here in the end game. So do yourself a favor and grab a bookmark and make sure you read these abilities through or even anything in the game as a matter of fact that would be useful information. Understanding your characters and how they work and which relic set 
process will cater to them and how they will work in specific team compositions is your primary goal of Honkai Star Rail. Now, if you are new, this isn't really easy to understand, but over time, the more you play, the more you will grasp this understanding. Now, let's talk about the end game content side of Honkai Star Rail. So first up, we have Pure Fiction. During your play through the Shang Show of the La Fu, you will come across a mission that will unlock Pure Fiction, which is one of the many end game contents of Honkai Star Rail. In Pure Fiction, you fight an endless swarm of enemies and you gain more points the more enemies you clear in this swarm. Pure Fiction is a good way to stack up Stellar Jade so that we can get more Golden Star Rail tickets. Now in Pure Fiction and the other in-game content game mode that we are going to be talking about, Memory of Chaos, you do need 8 built characters in order to proceed with this game mode. However, if you feel that your characters are not strong enough, you don't have the right teams for this in-game content, the first two stages are very easy to actually clear, so at least you can obtain a little bit of rewards. I'd also like to mention that you will have time to build your characters up because Memory of Chaos and Pure Fiction does reset over time. So as I was saying before, recovering your account will take time, so there's no need to rush this process. Also, another good thing to note is that Pure Fiction is really good with follow-up attack characters. And as I mentioned before earlier in this video, you can get Herda for free at Eidolon 5. And Herda is actually one of the best characters for Pure Fiction with her AoE damage. And if you are a person that owns Clara or Himiko, they are really strong to use for Pure Fiction as well. Moving on to Memory of Chaos. Memory of Chaos, just like Pure Fiction, requires two teams as I mentioned before. However, I feel that Memory of Chaos is actually a little bit harder than Pure Fiction. You do really need 8 built characters for Memory of Chaos, however, I don't see you having a problem with clearing the first stage. And just like Pure Fiction, you are able to obtain level up XP materials. I also almost forgot to mention that you could obtain Jade Feathers as well. These Jade Feathers are actually used in either the Pure Fiction or Memory of Chaos shop, which you could use to buy a whole bunch of different resources to help you through your playthrough of Honkai Star Rail. Also in version 2.3 of Honkai Star Rail, the Divergent Universe will be added to the game, which will be an extension of the simulated universe by Herda and another end game game mode. So use this update as a chance to collect even more resources and stellar jades. Well, that is all I have for today, guys. Make sure you smash that subscribe button down below so you can find your way back to the channel. And if you learned something new today or you have something they could teach somebody else, drop it in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure you join the community discord. That's it for now. Peace.